Tom Tom A newborn king to see power on the pom pom How finest gifts we bring power on the pom pom To lay before the king power on the pom pom Rumpa pom pom Rumpa pom pom So to honor him power rumpa pom pom when we come The Advent Liturgy for the second Sunday in Advent. Tell the whole world to sing a new song to the Lord. Let them announce his praises everywhere. Jesus, light of the world, speak to us. 
Come, Lord Jesus, come. Good morning and welcome to the Stamford Methodist Church and Circuit pre-recorded service on the second Sunday in Advent. I am Chris Ballard, local preacher from the Deepings Methodist Church. Thank you so much for joining me as we continue on our Advent journey this morning, preparing ourselves for the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. A big thank you to all those involved in the service. You already heard from Tony and Elaine Gregson who kindly brought us our Advent liturgy for this morning uh, from the Deepings Methodist Church. Later on you will hear uh, from Sue Wells, also from the Deepings Methodist Church, who will lead us in some prayers. And then from Nellie Moncrief from the Meth Deepings Methodist Church, who will bring our reading for this morning, which comes from the first chapter of Mark's Gospel, focusing on John the Baptist. This Sunday we have the opportunity to explore John the Baptist and to learn a bit more about him and his mission to prepare people for Jesus' coming. His faith and confidence shining out through his words and his actions, baptising many and encouraging all to repent from their sins. So as we start this morning's service, I want to invite you, as we have a moment of silence to prepare yourselves for worship, to meet with God to offer God whatever is on your mind now, to leave it at the foot of the cross. So let's pray. We thank you that we have this opportunity to clear our minds and focus on you. Receive all our prayers and thoughts now. We know that we can cast all our cares upon you because you will sustain us. You take it upon yourself to carry us when we are at our lowest. And so we thank you, Lord. Thank you that we have this time of worship to learn more about you and to become closer to you. Amen. Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship Your holy name The sun comes up It's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul Worship His holy name Worship your holy name You're rich in love and you're slow to anger Your name is great 
and your heart is kind for all your goodness I will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his holy name strength is failing the end draws near and my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years and then forever more bless the Lord oh my soul oh Worship His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship Your holy name I worship Your holy name Yes, I worship Your holy name So we meet together in prayer. Almighty and always loving God, we gather together today from wherever we are to let you know that you are an awesome God and to thank you for sending Jesus to show us how to love one another. We take this time to lay aside all the things that stop us from concentrating on you alone, preparing ourselves to learn more of what you require of us as followers of Jesus. Father, in this time of Advent, forgive us when we are not prepared to be surprised by you and miss the moments of joy you plant along our journey. We are sorry for being distracted by worldly things and not preparing our hearts to welcome you in. Forgive us when the volume of our lives stop us from hearing your offer of a new, full life in you. Lord, we know this season of Advent is a new journey to the stable. But through Christ's journey to the cross, we, through grace, can receive forgiveness and the chance to start again. Thank you. On this journey with you, help us to pass your grace and love to those we meet along the way. You are coming, Lord. May we prepare to see, hear, and serve you. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we join together to say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Mark 1 verses 1 to 8 this is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began as the prophet Isaiah had written. God said, I will send my messenger ahead of you to clear the way for you, 
Somebody is shouting in the desert, Get the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. So John appeared in the desert, baptising and preaching. Turn away from your sins and be baptised, he told the people. And God will forgive your sins. Many people from the province of Judea and the city of Jerusalem went out to hear John. They confessed their sins and he baptised them in the River Jordan. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. He announced to the people, The man who will come after me is much greater than I am. I am not good enough even to bend down and untie his sandals. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The second Sunday in Advent has come around pretty quick, considering all things that have happened. Unfortunately, there's just two more weekends to go until Christmas. So, how prepared are you for Christmas? Have you ordered the turkey? Sorted out all the presents? Written all the cards and hopefully sent them, or if not, are about to send them? Have you organised your day? Who are you going to be with? Where are you going to be? When are you going to get there? Or if people are coming to you, the the whole organisation of what's going to happen. Have you decorated your house? Have you put up the Christmas tree? Have you put stockings up for the kids? Whatever it might be, Christmas this year is going to be very different to normal. This year it's going to be a time when our preparations have been interrupted by the government regulations due to the coronavirus. Things are going to be different, will be uncomfortable for many. But the question I want to ask you is how prepared are you really for Christmas? You personally, how prepared, how mentally, how spiritually prepared 
a you for Christmas. All too often we get so wrapped up in the festivities of Christmas and what I like to call the Christmas festival and everything that goes with it. We forget that Advent is as much if not more about preparing ourselves rather than all the stuff that goes with it. You would have heard on TV those TV adverts where they often come across with the one day sales are now on, 50% off all the time. Everything is reduced, so you've got to be quick. You've got to go and make sure that you get those bargains. But sometimes when you hear something too often or hear the same types of things all the time, it becomes less and less meaningful. After a while, you notice that you stop even listening to those adverts, stop even watching them and they're just there in the background. The language is all the same, the style of ads very similar. The impact is less and less. But then you get something different. I don't know if you remember an advert, a car advert, or should I say a car sales company advert, that was on a little while ago where all they did was they had complete silence during that advert with the writing on the screen. Now, I don't know if you're the same as me, but that made me look up at the TV every time it was on because suddenly I thought something's gone wrong, the TV's turned off or we've lost the, the signal. It was different to normal. I wonder whether for many people, when they think about the spiritual aspect of Christmas, that's what it's like for them. That the real meaning of Christmas gets lost. Society has become saturated with cliches. The same spiritual sappy talk that you hear every December and November and October and sometimes even in September and August. The same talk about Christmas being a time of family, a time for charity, churches advertising themselves saying, come to us, we're the friendliest, we've got the best minister or the best preachers, we've got the best online worship, whatever it might be. But what does it really mean to us? What is Advent really about? Christmas and Advent can seem all too samey until you meet John the Baptist. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to meet John the Baptist? What that experience would be like? I'm pretty certain that if we were to see him around at this time, we wouldn't see him looking around the sales, looking around the shops. We're told that John the Baptist wore clothes made of camel's hair, a leather belt that was probably homemade around his waist. Instead of eating the Christmas turkey, he ate locusts and honey. More like a bush tucker trial to me, but John was so focused on his mission and being in the desert where he felt called to be, that he just had to eat what he could. You can imagine that John would have been ideal for being on one of those survival TV series. But do you know what? I reckon he probably would have got voted off as one of the first off. Because John the Baptist doesn't follow the norm. He has a mission and the things that he says go against the norm. You see, John the Baptist didn't use that spiritual sappy talk that we hear every December. He didn't use all those cliches about caring and sharing 
family, giving, hugging, although I appreciate we can't do hugging at the moment, about singing. John the Baptist certainly wasn't a salesman. He wouldn't try to sweet talk you into anything. He wasn't a politician trying to match his words with whatever the popular opinion of the day was. But he was a fresh, a breath of fresh air. A guy who didn't care what people thought. He had a message on his heart and he wanted to tell everyone. You see, John the Baptist had one job, which, as we heard in the passage, the prophet Isaiah talked about when he wrote, I will send my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare the way, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight the paths for him. His job or calling was simply to prepare people for the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Jesus. If John was here right now, I am certain that he would be preparing us for the coming of Jesus, the second coming of Jesus. And his credentials that the prophets several hundred years ago prophesied that John would be there to prepare the way for the Messiah, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, our Saviour. He would challenge us now, telling us that we need to repent, that there's something wrong with us, and it's time for us to change that God will forgive our sins, but we need to do it now because the Saviour is coming again. Our Saviour is coming again. You see, John was an extremely clear man. Who would come after him was much greater than him. John, a man who it would appear lived out his calling, his mission, who we would probably call a saint, told everyone that not even he was good enough to bend down and untie Jesus' sandals. What does that mean for us? How unworthy are we compared to that? John, a man who Isaiah prophesied about and the angel Gabriel foretold, is not even worthy to untie Jesus' sandals. How much more then do we need to repent our sins and to praise God that he would even consider forgiving our sins? and gifting to us his spirit. This Christmas is going to be very different. It perhaps is going to be much quieter, lonely time than what we've ever experienced. It might be that for the first time ever, we celebrate Christmas on our own or with much fewer people. It might be that Christmas is not the manic, frenzied day that we normally have, albeit most of us enjoy that and will miss it a lot. But perhaps the situation that we're in gives us an opportunity, an opportunity of extra time, extra space, Time for us to really reflect and think about what Christmas and the coming of Jesus really means to us. Time to really repent our sins and offer all the bad things that we have to God. To turn away from what is hurting us and hurting other people. 
and to let God forgive us. To be new, to be made new, to be reborn into a life shared with God. To welcome Jesus into our lives this Christmas. It's easy to say, but what can we really do this Christmas? I want to just mention something that is called the three R's of repentance that we can use as a practical way of helping us to focus our minds this Christmas. The first R of repentance is recognition, recognising our sins. Verse 5 tells us that this is what those first century Christians did. The whole of Judean countryside and all the people in Jerusalem went out to John the Baptist confessing their sins. Recognising your sin is the first step. Where have you been less perfect in your life? Look back on the conversations on the way you've dealt with people around you. Think back about your relationship with God. Think about your thoughts. Where have you been less than perfect? Recognise your sin and confess your sin to Christ. The second R is receiving. Receiving forgiveness from God. Verse 4 talks about a baptism of repentance repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The Lord God Almighty forgives you and me for all of our imperfections. Because of Christ, because of our Saviour, your sins are gone. God holds no grudges. He keeps no records of wrongs. He forgives you and me completely. The people that came out to John received God's forgiveness through the sacrament of baptism. Today, you are also able to receive that same forgiveness. Not just by being baptised. But every time you hear God's forgiveness spoken to you and repent your sins. The third R is reforming your life. That means that after you've been forgiven and that you know that you've been forgiven, things need to change. Your life needs to change for God. A few examples, after you've been forgiven for having a bad temper, do you become gentle? Have you become gentle? After you've been forgiven for being so greedy, you can become generous. After you have been forgiven for disobeying God and making excuses, You can begin to follow God, to obey God, not because you have to, but because you want to. You change from a self-centred worshipper to an other-centred worshipper of God. The final R of repentance is when your life is reformed, changed from how it was before. To recognise your sin. Receive forgiveness from God. And then once you've repented and been forgiven. Reform your life to follow Christ. To be a follower of Jesus. I want to finish with something slightly different. Cooking is a massive part of Christmas and that's what I want to finish with, a thought around cooking. What is the recipe 
for a successful Christmas. John will tell us that there are two main ingredients. The recipe for a successful Christmas is a heart full of repentance and a heart full of Christ. Practice the three R's of repentance and ponder and wonder the mystery and majesty of Jesus Christ. Those two ingredients make up the recipe for a successful Christmas, regardless of our circumstances. Your Christmas will be successful as you repent and focus on Christ. Let your Christmas preparation be a time that is filled with more than just a series of advertising and empty cliches. Caring and sharing, family, giving, charity are all good things. But let this Christmas be different for the right reason. These things cannot truly be enjoyed unless we have truly repented and received the forgiveness of Jesus. This Christmas can be a time to rejoice that someone has come, someone greater than John the Baptist, greater than you or I. Someone has come who brings real meaning to this special time of year, real meaning to our lives. And so I thank you, Jesus, for everything that you have done and will do for each one of us now. Amen. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that shall wear the robe and crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the starry crown Good Lord, show me the way Oh, fathers, let's go down Let's go down, come on down Oh, fathers, let's go down Down in the river to pray Let's go down, down in the river to pray.
going to come into a time of prayer now for prayers for others and for ourselves. Today we're going to use various images of stories and events that have happened around the globe and locally. I invite you to take the opportunity to pray over these things, but also to pray for the things that's on your mind and your hearts. Use this opportunity to share with God everything that is on your heart and your mind and offer everything to him. Whatever it is God wants us to hear, let our minds be open to that. Let our ears be open to hear what God has to say about these things. Let us just be ready to give our all to God now. Let's pray. Lord, we give all these things, all our prayers, all our thoughts, all our feelings to you. We thank you that through all of these events, all of these stories that we've heard about, that we've seen the images for, that they're in the midst of life, in the midst of these disasters and these things that are going on. 
you are there you are present in every situation and we thank you for that we thank you for those people that you have called to go into these situations some who are putting their own life on the lines on a daily basis to help and serve other people. We thank you so much, Lord, for those people. And if, Lord, if you want us to do something, pray that we can discern your will. We can discern what it is that you want us to do, whether it be to pray for a specific thing, whether it might be to just raise awareness of something, or maybe it's to really step out in faith and to go and do something. We just thank you, Lord, for all these things, for all these opportunities, and pray that as we discern what you want us to do, we may have the courage and the strength to follow your will, whatever that might be. We've been thinking about things on our hearts and on our minds. And thank you that we've had this opportunity to give these things to you, to cast our cares upon you. And pray that you will continue to sustain us through all these things. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your spirit, for forgiving us for everything that we do, all the wrong things that we do. Let us repent this Christmas. And invite you into our lives to come closer to you now. We ask this in your name, our Saviour, who came at Christmas. Amen. So I'd just like to finish by thanking all those involved in this service. If you feel moved, or want to speak to someone about anything that's been in this service, then at the end of the video, end of the recording, you will see a slide that will have the contact details for our Superintendent Minister, Reverend Andy File. He is more than happy to speak to people, to pray with people, or if you just want to share some thoughts with him, is more than happy to listen and be there for each one of you. I pray that we will all have hearts full of repentance and a heart full of Christ this Christmas. Amen. Find our rest in thee 
Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art, dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Expect